As a child, you probably learned that unlike other planets, Earth only has one moon. However, it turns out this isn't the case. Planet Earth has two moons. But how did Earth's second moon come to be identified so recently? Will humanity ever journey to this second moon and where is it located? Join us as we explore Earth's second moon. If you've ever envied Jupiter or Saturn for their numerous moons, you're in luck. A second moon orbits our Earth. It's known as Kamo O'Alawa. The name Kamo O'Alawa is derived from the Hawaiian words Ka, the, Mu, fragment, A, of, and Lua, to oscillate, referring to its motion in the sky as seen from Earth. However, instead of following a straight line, it makes a corkscrew-like turn. The obvious issue is, where did Kamo O'Alawa come from? The solutions are hypothetical. One theory is that it was captured by the general population of the NEOs in its Earth-like orbit. Its low eccentricity and inclination, on the other hand, are unusual for captured co-orbital states in numerical simulations. How did Earth's second moon come to be discovered? Kamo or Alawa, Earth's quasi-moon, was discovered in 2016. According to time, it's less than 50 meters across and orbits Earth in a corkscrew manner, traveling up to 100 times the distance our regular moon does. It's mostly driven by the sun's gravity, but this pattern appears because it's also, but not quite, on an Earth-like orbit. So it's this strange dance. Ben Sharkey, a PhD student at the University of Arizona who wrote the report, told Time. Earth's quasi-moon is thought to be a fragment of an asteroid or the first moon that synchronized its orbit with Earth. It was discovered with a NASA-run telescope in Hawaii and appeared to be more weakly lit than other moons. It was then amplified with a monocular telescope, which provided some additional illumination. If it is part of the moon, it must have been hit by another space rock because the samples are quite similar to those taken from the moon in 1971. This suggests that Kamo or Alawa is not just a second moon orbiting our planet, but also a small component of our present moon, and that only adds to the wonder. That's not at all difficult to believe given the circumstances. It's perfectly reasonable that a piece of our moon may fly off and end up near Earth because other celestial bodies are continually pummeling it. What you're seeing visually is worn silicate, Sharky explained to Time. It's almost like a fingerprint and it's hard to miss. After millennia of exposure to the space environment and micrometeorite hits, Given the hundreds of craters on the moon, some lunar ejector must be floating around in space. At a distance of 0.90 to 1.10 AU, Kamo or Alawa circles the sun. Although the period is around 366 days as of 2022, the longer term average period is closer to 365 days because it is a quasi-satellite of Earth and will remain such for hundreds of years. The eccentricity of its orbit is 0.10 and its inclination to the ecliptic is 8 degrees. It has a 0.033 AU, 4.9 million kilometer Earth minimum orbital intersection distance, which equates to 13 lunar distances. However, 13 LD is much outside Earth's 1.5 million kilometer or 3.9 LD hill sphere. In its traced course, the quasi-moon appears to be the Earth's perpetual companion. It looks to make an extremely eccentric orbit around Earth as it travels around the Sun. The object is outside of Earth's hill sphere and the Sun exerts a significantly larger gravitational force on it than Earth does. It is the best and most stable example of a near-Earth companion or quasi-satellite to date, while being too far away to be called a true natural satellite of Earth. Kamo or Alawa travels around the Sun every year at half the distance that Earth is from the Sun. It's inside Earth's orbit, which means it passes in front of our planet half the time and is farther away half the time. As it moves out of Earth's orbit, it falls more and further behind. 
Because of this, it experiences an annual up and down motion through Earth's orbital plane. It's as if Earth and this little moon are playing a game of leapfrog, and it's going to be that way for hundreds of years. Over several decades, the quasi-moon's orbit undergoes a gradual back and forth twist. While the little moon's orbital paths around Earth vary slightly from year to year, Earth's gravity is powerful enough to halt its forward or backward drift and hold it in place so that it never wanders more than 100 times the distance between Earth and our moon. The same mechanism stops the little moon from approaching our moon any closer than 38 times its distance. This little moon is, in effect, engaged in a small dance with Earth. There have been many quasi-satellites of Earth discovered, however, this one is the most stable in terms of orbit. However, scientists believe she is only here for a short time. Before it orbits Earth no longer, Kamo or Aloha may only be present for a few hundred years. Its trajectory is unstable, and in 300 years or so, it will most likely break free of the orbit and cruise through space. The closest Earth approach occurred on December 27, 1923, at a distance of 12.4 million kilometers, 32 LD. The quasi-moon will be 2.0 AU, that's 300 million kilometers, from Earth by late May 2369. We wish it all the best of luck on its future adventure, wherever that may be. The Earth, on the other hand, is a perilous place. Space rocks like asteroids and comets constantly move across the universe and often collide with Earth. The majority of these are insignificant and pose no hazard, but a few may be cause for concern. What are the known near-Earth objects? Only around 40% of the larger ones have been tracked by NASA thus far. Asteroids have previously visited Earth and will definitely do so in the future. How prepared do you think humanity will be when they appear? An asteroid and a comet are considered near-Earth objects if their orbit brings them within 120 million miles, or 193 million kilometers, of the Sun. A near-Earth object is considered a threat by astronomers if it comes within 4.6 million miles, or 7.4 million kilometers, of the planet and has a diameter of at least 460 feet or 140 meters. If a celestial body of this size collides with Earth, it might wipe out entire cities and devastate entire regions. Larger objects, those measuring 0.6 miles, that's one kilometer or more, might have global consequences and perhaps result in mass extinctions. A six mile or 10 kilometer diameter asteroid collided with what is now the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago causing the most famous and deadly collision. It wiped out the majority of plant and animal life on the planet, including the dinosaurs. On the other hand, smaller things can do a lot of harm. In Siberia, the Tunguska River was struck by a celestial body that measured roughly 164 feet or 50 meters in 1908. It destroyed nearly 80 million trees across an 830 square kilometer or 2,100 square kilometer area. An asteroid measuring only 65 feet or 20 meters in diameter exploded in the atmosphere 20 miles or 32 kilometers above Chelyabinsk in Russia, 2013. It ejected enough energy to detonate 30 Hiroshima bombs, injuring over 1,100 people and causing 33 million US dollars in damage. Asteroid 2005 ED224 is the next large asteroid that could collide with Earth. The 164-foot or 50-meter asteroid will fly by on March the 11th, 2023, with a 1 in 500,000 chance of colliding with Earth. While the likelihood of a huge asteroid crashing into Earth is remote, the resulting destruction would be immense. Since February 14, 2022, astronomers have discovered 28,266 near-Earth asteroids, 10,033 of which are at least 460 feet or 140 meters in diameter, and 888 at least 0.6 miles or 1 kilometer wide. Every week, around 30 new ones are introduced. 
We can only avoid calamity if we anticipate it, yet asteroids have been known to creep up on Earth in the past. In 2019, an asteroid the size of a football field, dubbed the City Killer, flew by Earth at a distance of less than 45,000 miles. In 2021, an asteroid the size of a 747 jet approached within striking distance, while in 2012, an asteroid 0.6 miles wide, 1 km, came within striking distance. Each of these was detected only a day or two before passing by Earth. One reason, according to research, is that Earth's rotation produces a blind area in which certain asteroids go undetected or appear motionless. If some surprise asteroids do not miss us, this could be a big issue. Astronomers discovered a tiny asteroid in 2008, only 19 hours before it collided in rural Sudan. And the recent discovery of an asteroid with a diameter of 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers implies that there are still large objects out there. So, what are our options? Purchasing planetary defense insurance is similar to purchasing homeowners insurance. Despite the fact that the chances of witnessing a disaster that destroys your home are quite remote, individuals nevertheless get insurance. The destruction and loss of life would be immense if even a single object measuring more than 460 feet or 140 meters were to strike our planet. The majority of Earth species could be wiped out by a larger impact. Even if such a body does not strike Earth in the next 100 years as projected, the possibility still exists. Investing in shielding the world against harmful cosmic objects may give humanity some peace of mind and prevent a catastrophe in this low likelihood versus high consequence scenario. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.